growing up, right, you hear about like following in footsteps. Well, our farm is sugar sand. It's just very soft. You step in it, you leave a footprint. And when my dad and I would be out there and I'd be riding with him and I'd have my, my sleep, my little pack of donuts and my chocolate milk, when we would get out in the field to walk around, I would literally step in his footsteps. Like, and think I'm following in his footsteps. So I didn't know what it meant. I thought that's what it meant, but I just wanted to be like him. I wanted to do everything that he did. You know, to me, this is home. This is not even just saying it, right? Like up here on the right is Bayshore Farms, the Singletary's. They're my dad's been friends with Steve his whole life. Our families have been friends with each other. I grew up with Cody and Matthew, and that's Matthew's house right there. He's got a wife and baby in there, and they're living their life. Got a couple acres out here, right across the street from their packing house. Like that's. It's what I thought I would be doing, and it's it's even weird right now to talk about it, to, you know, kind of uh, keep, you know, every time I drive by all these places, it's like, man, I don't, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I've went a different way, so, um, that's just, you know, they're all, and everybody's just trying to, to grow watermelons and, and feed their families, so to, to think about it in the bigger picture, though, I don't, I don't know how to think about that. Everybody's trying to trying to continue to adapt and survive but grow at the same time and that's if if I think about it too much I get really scared and I don't want to do anything so I just I think that getting to go and tell this story across the country is is probably once in a lifetime and I definitely couldn't could not pass it up so I'm I'm glad we get to do it Sometimes the competitive side of me does come out, and I, I am a little jealous of the things Chad's getting to do. Um, he's so far ahead of me in so many aspects. Um, just the things he's been able to, he's, he's doing, not been able to do, he's actively doing uh, with the farm, with my dad, and with everybody on the watermelon side is, he is, he's doing a lot of the things I thought I would do. That's, I'm, I'm obviously super happy for him. I go stay with him when I come in town, which is odd for, I, 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 we laugh about it. Like I, I don't, I don't own a house. I rent. Um, I drive a older truck than he does. More miles on it, and, you know. But he's, uh, we're, we're, you know, we definitely went down different paths. Definitely. Um, but it'll, I think it'll all come full circle. What's up? Hey. Good to see you. Yeah. So he started racing at Punta Gorda in the fast trucks and fast kids that I eventually started in. I was six, so obviously I was playing soccer and he had played soccer, so I played because he played and he was the hero. He was the one I always wanted to be and wanted to be better than. There was times that when I first started out racing when I was 11 and 12, he was out there in a late model running easily three seconds faster, but he would, sl to teach me the line, slowly back up to me to make it make me feel better and build my confidence that I can do this. Yeah. These have been pulling pretty good. A couple little spots for the where the leaves are burnt, but I mean, other than that, we got one right here that should be fine. Pollinators look good. Premiums. A little hard with these older styrofoam trays, but overall. I think they're pulling pretty good. Start the countdown. 100 days will be loaded water balance. Roots look good. Plants are ready. No more cold and no more wind. The weather's good from here on out, we hope. Yeah. It was always just a hobby, and when he graduated high school, he was going to come back to the farm and never really thought anything of it because during high school and when I was in middle school, we were both working out here full time after school, either he'd pick me up or my dad would pick me up from school and we'd go to work. After New Samarna, I was like, okay, there might be something here to do for a couple years in NASCAR, but he'll come back eventually. Well, now 
now you don't know. I mean, it's good because he's doing so good and winning races and competing for championships, but that's nothing that we ever thought would ever go that far. Just the reality of it. Father, thank you for this meal and thank you for this day and bless this food and thanks for letting us all be able to do what we love to do and keep on doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 No pressure. Nothing's a watermelon. In it to win it, he's going to yeah. win something. <laughs> I already won something. <laughs> 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 Wait, Favorite grandchild. <laughs> and it wasn't grandson, it was grandchild. I heard <laughs> the words, clearly. <laughs> Who are you dedicating this race to? Sounds like me, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I'd say I guess it's always been a joy for all of us. Just to yeah. kind of in, in what we do every day, farming, farming, selling watermelons year round. It just, it, it, it gives us probably as a family a little break in, in what you're doing to just stop every now and then. And even if you are in the field or listening to the NASCAR app and and, and working, it's kind of getting your mind off of a little bit for a short moment. We pay attention and watch, and, and uh, so that part of it's enjoyable, always has been. We finally get a race. We're gonna be very conservative tonight, but it's a real race, it's a real purse. So I didn't grow up in the sport. I didn't grow up coming to the track, didn't, especially not coming and staying here in the, in the motorhome lot with all the drivers. So a lot of the guys I race against now did. Their dads were racers or their granddads or all their whole family. And so this is all they know. So they, they were around it. So they remember it. And they talk about it, and they tell they tell everybody like how good it was when they were kids, and I'm just like I don't see that. I wasn't here, but I can relate it to farming, and like the old days were not the good old days of farming. Like, I mean, my granddad remembers planting with a mule. That's not the good old days. Same thing with racing. I feel like there might have been less crowds and less stuff, and, and but like we've got. We've got, we're going to have 100,000 people here, over 100,000 people here this weekend. That's more than to go to the Super Bowl. This is just our first race, and then we're going to run for 30-something weeks across the country, crisscross it back and forth, and, like, we've, all got, we've got it pretty good. Like, if, if, you're, if you're camping anywhere here at Daytona, like, you, whether you're working or you're coming as a fan, like, you're doing it because you want to, one. You don't have to be a driver. You don't have to be a mechanic or a pit crew guy like we all chose this so we're pretty pretty darn blessed to get to do it so i just i feel like the glory days are right now yeah there's gonna be bad ones and there's gonna be good ones but we are gonna look back on right now and be like wow that was that was pretty cool have gone. Well, there's something wrong with those cars. Like, with the engine, 